You know, I just want to say one brief thing about something the previous speaker said. I didn't want to spend too much time on that because I don't think it's important enough, but one thing is worth considering. He's the, he's the nominal head of an organization supposedly representative of the undergraduates, whereas in fact, under the current directors, it derives its authority as delegated power from the administration. It's totally unrepresentative of the graduate students and TAs. But he made the following statement, I quote, I would ask all those who are not definitely committed to the FSM cause to stay away from the demonstration. All right, now listen to this. For all upper division students who are interested in alleviating the TA shortage problem, I would encourage you to offer your services to department chairman and advisors. That has two things, a strike breaker and a fink. I'd like to say, I'd like to say one other thing about a union problem. Upstairs, you may have noticed already on the second floor of Sproul Hall, locals 40 and 127 of the Painters Union are painting the inside of the second floor of Sproul Hall. Now, apparently that action had been planned sometime in the past. I've tried to contact those unions, unfortunately, and tears my heart out. They're as bureaucratized as the administration. It's difficult to get through to anyone in authority there. Very sad. We're still, we're still making an attempt. Those people up there have no desire to interfere with what we're doing. I would ask that they be considered and that they not be heckled in any way. And I think that, you know, while there's unfortunately no sense of, no sense of solidarity at this point between unions and students, there at least need be no, you know, excessively hard feelings between the two groups. Now, there are at least two ways in which sit-ins and civil disobedience and whatever, at least two major ways in which it can occur. One, when a law exists, is promulgated, which is totally unacceptable to people, and they violate it again and again and again till it's rescinded, repealed. All right. But there's another way. There's another way. Sometimes. The form of the law is such as to render impossible its effective violation as a method to have it repealed. Sometimes the grievances of people are more, extend more, to more than just the law, extend to a whole mode of arbitrary power, a whole mode of arbitrary exercise of arbitrary power. And that's what we have here. We have an autocracy which, run, which runs this university. It's managed. We were told the following. If President Kerr actually tried to get something more liberal out of the regents in his telephone conversation, why didn't he make some public statement to that effect? And the answer we received from a well-meaning liberal was the following. He said, would you ever imagine the manager of a firm making a statement publicly in opposition to his board of directors? That's the answer. Well, I ask you to consider. If this is a firm, and if the Board of Regents are the Board of Directors, and if President Kerr, in fact, is the manager, then I tell you something, the faculty are a bunch of employees, and we're the raw materials. But we're a bunch of raw materials that don't mean to be, have any process upon us, don't mean to be made into any product, don't mean, don't mean to end up being bought by some clients of the university, be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone. We're human beings. <laughs> And that, that brings me to the second mode of civil disobedience. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all.
That doesn't mean, and it will be interpreted to mean, unfortunately, by the bigots who run the examiner, for example. That doesn't mean that you have to break anything. 1,000 people sitting down someplace, not letting anybody buy, not letting anything, anything happen, can stop any machine, including this machine, and it will stop. We're going to do the following. And the greater the number of people, the safer they'll be, and the more effective it will be. We're going, once again, to march up to the second floor of Sproul Hall. And we're going to conduct our lives for a while in the second floor of Sproul Hall. We'll show movies, for example. We tried to get un chant d'amour. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's tied up in the court because of a lot of squeamish moral mothers for a moral America and other people on the outside. The same people who get all their ideas out of the San Francisco Examiner. Sad, sad. But Mr. Landau, Mr. Landau has gotten to some other films. Likewise, we'll do something. We'll do something which hasn't occurred at this university in a good long time. We're going to have real classes up there. There are going to be freedom schools conducted up there. We're going to have classes on the First and Fourteenth Amendments. We're going to spend our time learning about the things this university is afraid that we know. We're going to learn about freedom up there, and we're going to learn by doing. Now, we've had some good long rallies. Just one moment. We've had some good long rallies, and I think I'm sicker of rallies than anyone else here. It's not going to be long. I'd like to introduce one last person, one last person before we enter Sproul Hall. Yeah. And uh, the person is Joan Baez.